What's up guys, I'm They Coming. If you're new to the channel, you might recognize me from the 5th anniversary class stream where I was competing with my Town Hall 9. But, I also recently went to Town Hall 11 on, it, on another account and have had great time farming it up so far. So, if you're a Town Hall 10 that will soon go to Town Hall 11, I'm going to give you my tips for success, explain my logic behind my early upgrade order, and of course touch on the 10.5 strategy. Is it worth it or not? So let's talk about the most immediate differences between a Town Hall 10 and a Town Hall 11. Laboratory upgrades aside, the Grand Warden and the Eagle Artillery are the two big things that set a Town Hall 11 apart from a Town Hall 10. Additionally, when you upgrade your clan castle, the single extra spell slot allows you to take 6 elixir spells as opposed to just 5 at Town Hall 10. So what do you do first? Assuming you've maxed your resources before your brand new Town Hall 11 finishes upgrading, you still will not be able to upgrade that many things to start. A level 1 Grand Warden will cost you 6 million elixir, your laboratory will also cost 6 million elixir, and all four of your gold storages, which will allow you to upgrade that clan castle, will cost a combined 10 million elixir. So right off the bat, you're looking at 22 million elixir that you need just to get started with Town Hall 11. Now, disclaimer. This next part is going to involve spending some money on the game, and if you absolutely cannot do that, you should still listen for information about the .5 concept in this build. My first major suggestion when you hit Town Hall 11 is to buy the special TH11 value pack that will appear in your store. It costs $19.99 and you get a level 1 Grand Warden, the Eagle Artillery, with 0 build time, and 2500 gems which you will definitely want for boosting or gemming some hero time. Insta building the Grand Warden with this pack reduces your initial elixir drop to 16 million. Of course many of you will immediately say, well what about the Eagle, isn't that going to increase my war weight by a lot? And you're certainly right to be concerned. However, as Town Hall 11s sit at the top of your clan's war map, it is actually recommended to make the top few villages on your map as fat as possible defensively in order to prevent being 3 starred by a Town Hall 10. Dropping that Eagle Artillery to start is largely considered to be a good move by competitive players because the global defensive power it possesses will protect the top of your war map, and this is where close wars are often won and lost. Since you're dropping your Eagle to start Town Hall 11, it is my opinion that the 10.5 concept is not worth it. You are better off having slightly better defense than your offense at early TH11 simply because your clan wars need fat anchor bases at the top of the map. As of now, despite the major matchmaking announcement made by Supercell, many people are still complaining about engineered clan matchups, and because this is still the case, an Eagle Artillery will be a necessary line of defense against those opponents. So let's pretend that you've bought your level 1 Warden and Eagle with the value pack. What are the first things to spend your full storages on? So I've broken this down into six phases of sort of structures that you want to get going at the beginning of TH11. For phase one, first and foremost, dedicate one builder to the laboratory. This is always recommended at every town hall level and should come as no surprise. You want the ability to upgrade your troops as soon as possible as each lab upgrade will take a considerable amount of time, roughly two weeks in most cases. Second, use two builders on your elixir storage to achieve a max loot cap of 9.5 million elixir. This is going to prevent a loot cap from stopping any progress you could realistically make on your Grand Warden. The first time you will need more than 9.5 million elixir is when you're upgrading your Grand Warden above level 15. That's plenty far off. Also, there are only a few elixir upgrades that cost more than 9.5 million in the laboratory, and these you won't need to do until much later, so you will be completely safe starting with just two max level storages. The other two builders will be reserved for your queen, warden, and spending all of your extra gold on your new wall pieces, trying to upgrade all those new walls to level 11. Now, you might think I'm crazy saying this, but I've actually found that I like the long lab upgrade times. My first laboratory upgrade should be completing in two days, so I've had 12 days to free farm my queen and my Grand Warden without stressing about having enough loot to meet my next laboratory timing. I was able to farm a level 45 Queen and a level 15 Grand Warden in two weeks in addition to putting my level 3 boulders into the laboratory. All the while, I've nearly finished upgrading all of my new 25 wall pieces to level 11. Now, pause. All of this that I just described has been possible through a considerable amount of gems, but before you tune out, 
hear me out on this. If you are a new Town Hall 11 and you are meticulous about maxing your Town Hall 10, you've been playing the game for at least two years. You dedicated a lot of your time and energy into enjoying this game just as I have. This game is a hobby and a passion for me, so I don't mind the idea of spending gems to keep my progress going smoothly. For competitive players, it is completely necessary to get your Royals maxed out ASAP to participate in league play. If you are interested in obtaining max level Royals in the shortest time possible without buying them outright, listen up. If you are able to afford it, two chest of gems or roughly $200 worth of in-game currency will allow you to comfortably farm max level Royals within the first month of Town Hall 11. That's a level 45 Queen, 45 King and level 20 Warden, just in one month. The key is to only spend the gems on Barrack and Royal boosts, in addition to gemming the upgrade time for each Royal level. A small trick that I use to squeeze just a little bit more value out of my gems is I wait until the next farming session to wake a Royal up. Say I typically farm at nighttime. When I put the Queen to sleep at night, I wait until the next night to wake her up for my next farming session. You'll save roughly 100 gems, which is worth approximately two full army boost sessions. Now for phase two, for your next round of builders, I suggest to drop four builders on all of your gold storages. This will cost roughly 10 million elixir, so your warden progress will slow down for a couple days, but this is not a bad thing, this is fine. Upgrading your gold storages to max will allow you to upgrade your clan castle, unlocking one extra spell spot. This will allow you to take a two slot elixir spell in your CC, extending the number of elixir spells you can take to six. Your fifth builder should remain available for royal upgrades and walls. Keep pushing your queen to max and hitting your grand warden at every opportunity. Next for phase three, as soon as those four builders are finished, your next round of upgrades should be one builder for your clan castle and two builders to max out your remaining two elixir storages. This will leave you with two builders. Obviously, you want to keep one of those builders open for royals and walls, but the fifth builder I would suggest using for your brand new archer tower. It's a cheap defense to drop and upgrade and it covers both ground and air. You should be able to keep upgrading this to level 13 very easily. Now for phase four. During this phase, you should be looking to go as heavy as possible on defense, starting with your Infernos and your Eagle Artillery. Go ahead and upgrade these to max level as soon as possible. Remember for Town Hall 11, being heavy defensively is not a bad thing. You want to function as an anchor for your clan wars and ideally hold attackers to a one star. Keep one builder available at all times for a hero upgrade until those are maxed. At that point, continue upgrading defense, starting with your new cannon, wizard tower, and expo until those are maxed to Town Hall 10 levels. Next, for phase five, I suggest maxing all four of those expos to level five. It's an expensive upgrade to make. I believe it's nine and a half million gold a piece, so you're gonna have to work to farm those, but yeah, max all four of those expos to level five, and you'll have the fifth builder still available for potential royal upgrades and wall upgrades. Now for the final phase. At this point, the field is very open. You'll have your choice of defenses to upgrade based on what you feel is right. However, I would advise delaying things like bomb towers and mortars until the very end. Also, early air defense upgrades can also be a very good choice because Town Hall 11 v 11 Lalo is a go-to strategy for competitive players. Other structures that will target both ground and air are also going to help defend those, these air, air attacks, but also ground attacks. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you have any questions about the build order, I will do my best to answer each and every question in the comment section. In my next video, I will be providing a Town Hall 11 laboratory guide that you won't want to miss. Take care, see you later.